hey everybody. <laughs> All of you, hello. <laughs> Just the way I wanted it. This is not going to be a killer presentation because that one on how to have a killer presentation is at 3 p.m. <laughs> so this is clearly going to be awful. You can leave now. I won't mind. Um, so Appium is a uh, it's an open source software that does automated mobile testing. Um, it's like most open software it's got a lot of potential and it's actually really well maintained compared to like iOS driver I don't know how many of you are uh, QA testers working in automation but um, have any of you actually tried it yet you've tried it two three okay um, I'm actually gonna spend some time like on the setup part of it because when I know I first got into trying Appium it took me forever to get it just to work right like it's not intuitive and the documentation is is not really great at it misses skips a lot of steps and I'll show that for example um, the uh, let's see where's so here's basically Appium's own documentation which says uh, install Appium app uh, install Xcode and install Java yeah you need a little more than that just a little bit. Here's all the things I'm going to show you. So, and then here's a, another site which I like this one because it has this pretty picture that shows you what's happening here. Um, this is basically it. So you can run your test.java or Python or whatever you want to use. And then uh, the Appium server you can put on wherever and then it you can either use emulators or real devices where it sends um, your, it controls it using Node.js. So you can read this paragraph here. All this magic happens over the JSON wire protocol. Appium puts a small JavaScript file on the mobile device called bootstrap.js to receive and send responses back to the Appium server location running the node.js component, which then communicates with the test file. So you also need node.js. Was that even on the Appium site? Did I say it was? I don't know. Um, so the first thing you do for those who are really beginning is you need to install Java and then set the Java home variable. <coughs> You're also going to have to set an Android uh, home variable and do the path for the platform tools, tools and build tools. So Basically, you're going to open, and if you don't have a bash profile file yet, you can create one. You can use command line, or um, it's a lot easier to use the command line. And there's plenty of sites out there that, that show you how to do that. Because the other way to your bash profile is uh, not necessarily clean. So did I, I think I left it up just so I could show someone where it is. Maybe I didn't. Anyways. Um, so once you have Java and you have the Java home and you have the Android home, um, you need to install Xcode, you need to install Node.js. I'm not going to show you how to do all those. There's plenty of documentation on that and it's not that difficult. Um, then you need to get, for Android, because you can either do Android automation or iOS. The one thing you can't do is Windows Phone. Um, which is funny because I have a Windows phone. Uh, but first I'll start with the Android. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get Android Studio. Android Studio is the tool now for creating Android apps. It's pretty much what everyone's... You can use some other ones, but it's it's got the big share. It's made by Google. And then once you have Android Studio, you'll have to create an emulator which is using the um, <coughs> AVD manager. So this is your virtual device manager. And to create one, you just click create, and you can select a, a phone, a pre-existing one. We'll just go ahead and... Is this, is this because you're 
you need to have, I mean, you could plug in your own device if you wanted and just click go to that, but you need a device to test it on. So you either have to have an emulator or a real device connected to, to a machine. And so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The setup for Appium is immense. There's, as you can see, how many steps have I set already to get it going? Like, there's a reason nobody's here because they probably tried it and were like, screw that. Like, this is ridiculous. I can't tell you how many hours and I had to go through just to get everything set up so that it worked. And I'd make emulators, and I'm gonna show you a little thing here. So you're making the emulator, and you're like, oh, this is easy. Da da da. Yeah, I pick up that and that. Well, if you don't have this checked, use host, GPU, it's not gonna work for your Appium. It doesn't say that anywhere, except now, because I'm telling you. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah. Are you gonna make the slides available somewhere? Uh, the video will be available. I think they'll just post it on YouTube, and you can go do that. I don't actually do slides. I do this one little document here that tells me everything, and I then tell you. Yeah, this is not a killer presentation. I warned you, but <laughs> it is killer. Woohoo! So yeah, you actually have to go through all this. Like, um, so make sure that's checked, and then you just finish it, and you have a device. I've already got some going. Um, That's important too. Yes, and I was gonna. That's the next thing I was gonna talk about. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, right after that. <laughs> and I would just say Google this. Hacks M expand memory, or YouTube it. There's one little video. It's five minutes, and it shows you that there's two versions on Android that you can use, and this is the reason why. The Hacks M. Let me open it up. Here's your Hacks M installation, which is under your library, Android, SDK, extras, blah, blah, blah. It goes all the way down to the Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager. The problem is, is when Hacks M installs on your computer, it installs with just a teeny bitty amount of memory usage allowed, which for Appium, it's not going to work. Because Appium loves memory. It's a memory hog, man. And it crashes fairly often because of that. It's still some kinks, clearly, but they're working on them. Um, so you have to go here and you you would double click this one, open this up, and basically reinstall it. Did I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have one running, so I won't do it. But basically, you go through the installation process and expand your memory a ton. Make give it a lot of memory, like tons. Um, otherwise, when you're running it on your app, your emulator, it's going to crash. It will. But does anyone tell you this? Anywhere in the documentation? No. Took me a while to figure this out. <laughs> so once again, it's not easy to set up. That's why I'm spending so much time on the setup. Um, go ahead. So, I took over an Appium project, and uh, I know they did this hacks and install memory thing, and they, they up the, the memory of the device, but when you, if I remember correctly, when you start the device, it says, hey, hacks is installed, it's working great, and then right after that it says, hey, this device shouldn't have this much memory, like, this device doesn't have this much memory or something? Yeah. Is it just like a, like more of a warning, or is it saying you're over the normal memory <coughs> of the device? I'm trying to wonder what... I'm trying to figure out what that message actually means. Oh, the Haxum, Haxum's a mess. Yeah. I get so many weird errors and warnings with that thing, I'm like, I just ignore them now. Okay, but it's working, it's just, yeah, it's it, just throwing errors all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's going to work, so yeah, it just, that's what it does, I guess. Noisy. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see if I was doing it. You'll probably see at least one or two here, and it's working fine, so. Okay. I, yeah, that baffled me too because I'm researching these errors. Everyone gets them. There's no answers for them. But, yeah, it's it's too bad that they have to use the Haxum thing. And it only runs on certain um, computer configurations. Like, uh, you have to have Intel drivers. And so certain 
PCs aren't going to work with it. And that's why they don't truly support Windows. They do support Windows, but you only get, you only can do Android if you have a, a Windows laptop. That's it. So, and that's the reason why, is because of the driver situation. Um, yeah, that's another downer. Um, so once you get, you do all that, and you're all excited. You're like, all right, I've got my, I started my emulator, which to start, you go back to Android Studio, you open up your AVD manager, and there's a little play button here. And you can also edit it. So you can go like this, and if you forgot to have that checked, or make sure it's checked, open that up. There's some other options in there. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the AVD manager. Um, so that's good. So your, your, my device is started. There it is. It's running. I got this thing, which is telling me how much memory it's using, and CPU looks good. Um, then you can open up Appium, which is pretty easy. If you download just the, um, here I'm going to close it. Basically, you just go to the Appium website, which is here. And I really don't like their website, but you can just download, download the Appium app. I recommend that. You can use com command lines tool, but the user interface is actually really nice. I think they've done a fantastic job with that. And then to, once you have it installed, just open it. And this is where it gets really fun too. So this little button is called the doctor button. It has the stethoscope on it. If you click it, it's going to make sure you have everything you need to run your test. So for running Android checks, all this stuff that wasn't documented anywhere is checking. Android Home is set. Java Home is set. ADB exists. Uh, Android exists. Emulator exists. So all these things that weren't documented anywhere, it checks. So sooner or later you would find and you'd be like, what? Why didn't anybody tell me? There it is. So that's what this tool is really helpful. And you can also see um, for the iOS, it's a little, it's much simpler for the iOS apps. It was first, when it first came out, that's pretty much all it did. Android came later. So all you need for the iOS is install Xcode and the command line tools. And that's, that's pretty much it. All that other stuff is pretty much added in. <clears throat> so mine checks out, it's good. Good to do. So I have, now when I, so now you go to the Android, and the one thing you need is an APK. You have to have the APK. You can't test on just any app um, out there. You have to have the APK. <coughs> you can add the package and the wait for package and launch activity if there's an activity you want to launch within it. Um, you can do any of these. It's pretty extensive. Uh, I don't really mess around much with this. I tried to keep it as simple as possible so my config and my test is also simple. Because once you start messing with, um, once you start messing with the config, which will look something like this, the capabilities, if that changes or your Xcode updates or your Android Studio updates and you end up <coughs> with a different emulator, it can get really hairy really fast. I mean, you always got to make sure everything's matching. And that can be a pain. So you can actually, I don't need any of these desired capabilities to run it. I just threw it in to show you. Um, so the other things you can do, you can use a browser. So if yours are, are browser tested, you can just open up a browser right on your emulator and run it from there using, um, I use Selenium with, with test and G to write my, my test cases. Um, you can launch a specific device as long as you've already created that device on an emulator or 
you have it attached to your phone directly, or your your the device attached directly to your PC. Um, you can use choose which which platform and which version to run. You can even do the language and the locale, um, and then you can actually even do. Uh, so that's not what I wanted to show you. So you can throw in some arguments like, uh, well, I've never really used arguments, so I just, a lot of it, I don't want to go there. But, um, do you have to use this to set up, like, when you want to launch the application with different? Activities or whatnot, you have to use it here, or can you do that in your test scripts? I'm a, I'm, I don't know. Are there test scripts? I've never, I've never used this. <clears throat> so that's what I was talking about. Your test script has to match what's in Appium. So if you put, if you check things in here, like if I change the platform name, my test script has to match that. So you can either control it. Um, you'll see. In order to run it, I have to launch Appium first. So Appium's going to launch, and then I can run my test. So this has to be running before I can have my test run. So this has to be, whatever this is, is controlling it. Well, say you wanted to start a different activity in your, you got multiple in your Android app. Do you have to specify it here, or can you leave it out and put it in your script to say, hey, this is what I, you know? No, it's got to, this is it. Okay. I've tried, I mean, you can, but. I it's more so like if you have, it's like an activity that says go to go to login page or something like that, or login. If all your test scripts assume that you start at the login, then you could start writing your test script at the login. Step, skip having that bit in the beginning of your test script that says, hey, go to login page. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Well, I mean, if you're going to do like a full test and you've got, you know, activities that maybe are launched by different uh, by other activities, and you just want those to be the initial, you know, that's called and that's the initial launch, and you need to make sure that your app responds the right way. I'm just wondering if you need to put it here. You would put it here. Yeah. Okay. It's always got to be here first. Okay. And if you can't do it here first, I wouldn't try and do it uh, in your code. Okay. I've never had much success that way. So I'm not saying you possibly can. I mean, th there are some things you can do that with. Like you can start in your app and then move to the browser without the browser being checked, but it's messy, and it doesn't always work. And if your memory's not high enough, it's gonna it's gonna kill it. Okay. So, <clears throat> I mean, most of the apps that are tested with this are pretty basic apps. The complex ones can can be kind of brutal. Um, so once you have your settings set here, um, you can launch it. And then once you're, once it's launched and you have your app up there, you can click this inspector button and it opens it up in this nice UI where you can inspect elements. So you can dig down and you can get the X path for certain elements. So for selenium, you need the, the element. Um, you need a way of, of recognizing it. This makes it really nice and easy. With the Android one, you, uh, you can't just select them here. But you'll see later when I do the iOS app, you can just select the element here and it'll have a red thing around it and that makes it really nice. Now you can do pretty much anything you need to do with it. So you can either tap, swipe, shake, precise tap, scroll to. Um, any of these functions are available. Uh, and here's the really fun part and nice part of the UI is if you click record, you get this, this uh, it generates the code for you. The code might not be perfect. You might have to make some changes. In fact, I've never been able to just to copy it and put it in somewhere and have it work right. You almost always have to modify the code. But it's a great base. 
it's a great place and it makes it so much quicker to make tests. Um, so you can see I showed you on mine, this is the desired capabilities. It's all generated from what was in my config on uh, my configurations in Appium. And then I'll go up a little bit. So now, say I want to click that one. Uh, oh, that's first, so I'll click first. Go back. Not that one. Not that one. Did I miss it? Anyways. So you're saying this lets you actually create the tests? Yeah. The system and then it well, I'll just do a precise tap. Say you wanted to do a precise tap. And then I want to click here. Oh, great Appium. It's not running. Huh. That happens a lot with Appium. Okay, so launch. Especially with the inspector, man, it starts sucking up your memory like crazy. CPU intensive. Okay, so try again. Say precise tab here. Oh, yeah, it really doesn't like that at all. <coughs> when developing tests, it's much easier to do it with local devices. It's not that easy. Yeah, local devices are are better than the emulators. Can you do this with a, can you actually build your test with the device too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do everything on your device. It's just much faster. I don't yeah. use VM to hardly anything. Yeah, and it's a lot more accurate because the emulators, even though you're saying how much um, memory and CPU to use, it's still not exactly accurate. Um, the one thing is, is if you want to do it on a an iOS device, an Apple device, you have to have the developer's license. Otherwise, a key, or a key to the app license, so you just need to be assigned on the license. Yeah, I, that's worked for you because I, I had, I need the developer's license for when I tried it, but. They just have to add you to the list of Google Apps development. Even though you're not developing anything, you're testing, you still need access to the source code to build it. That's good to know. I haven't tried that. I'll, I'll go do it. Uh, good advice there. Glad someone's here who knows it. So, um... Wait, you have to build the test or to run them? You have to actually... You have to build the app on your local environment in order to run it. Yeah, for the iOS, you have to build it using Xcode. And I highly recommend that when you build it, uh, you build it as a uh, test, test build. It'll work... I found it works a lot better if it's a test build. So there's build... Build for testing. Do that. And then once you have the iOS app, all you need is the app path. Um, to the, the project itself? Yeah, so the app path is, is going to be something like um, like this one, that's the app path. It's the dot app. It's the thing that actually, the actual app application. That gets built? Yeah. So, if you go. so once you've built it, this is what it's going to look like. It'll be somewhere, wherever your, your projects are, right. and then go build, immediate, or products, debug, iPhone simulator, and then it's there. So that's what it'll look like. Um, they're, they're kind of a pain to find. The first time you're trying to do it, you'll be like, what? It's like, where is that? Um, okay. I've had to track down before when I was testing my data that was storing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first time you do it, you're like, this is ridiculous. Why do they put the dot app like 
10 levels deep. Um, well, let's see if I can click on something where it won't blow it up. I wonder if it's because it's connected to the monitor or something. It's fine yesterday. All right, try and record something else. Okay, there we go. So I'll just tap that. And then that pops up and you can keep going and making your thing. You can see down here. Um, so when I tapped it, it automatically created this line of code, which is saying, using Selenium, tap that button. Um, and then once you have your commands and your thing, you can go to whichever IDE you like to use. And so here I've I slowed it down so we could see what's happening because it goes really fast, which is the nice thing about testing automation. And then if you run it, and go to your emulator. slowed it down too much. There it goes. I was thinking of the movie Nerds when I wrote this. And it finished and it was successful so the test passed. All these steps it said were fine. You can put a search to find elements, make sure they're good. That was all in the Selenium stuff yesterday. I think there were like three classes so I'm not going to go over that. But that would be Android. And then for iOS, um, go back here. Let's close that. Stop this. It's probably going to crash. Wait. Select that. And so I put in my, my app path. And then I launch it. I didn't use iPhone 6 last time. That's odd. <clears throat> so here's the nice thing about the iOS is, say you want to, if you just select it in the inspector, it highlights it and takes you right to that element, which is really nice. It's a lot better. Um, and then you can use your, your buttons. If you want to do a swipe, that's kind of fun. Go here. And then click there, and then you can say how fast you want to do it, or slow, and then click perform, <laughs> and it'll swipe it. So that's really nice. Um, some things to know on, on the iOS settings are there's actually some different ones. You still have the language, locale, but you can also do calendar an orientation. Um, you can do a full reset, no reset, and then there's the, the logs. Um, so you can actually set it up for, for testing devices in a whole bunch of ways. Um, What's your way? Okay. Can you show me how you're setting up the test so you can, uh, what, what's the criteria for pass and what's the criteria for fail? Sure. Um, that's more on the Selenium side, but what it is is if it doesn't if it doesn't find the element, it'll fail. If it can't do the action on that element, it'll fail. And then you can also put in asserts like assert that this text is showing or that this button is showing, and it has this image for the background. Or you can basically test it any way you want. And it goes really fast. So you want to test everything. Um, with Selenium, you can actually go and grab all the elements and then 
you can have fun with that. Uh, it's pretty endless on how you can you can run your tests. I use test ng so I can make a bunch of smaller tests, and then each test it'll give you a report on if it passed or failed, and if it failed, why. And you can customize your failures, like you can have it report out to a reporter or just the system out or do whatever and just have uh, more details on why it, it failed or a quicker way to view. Um, and, and some of my bigger projects I do that. Or if you're stuck, um, some tests can get pretty hairy, like you want to do a bunch of things and you want to know if things are working but you don't want these things to fail before you get to this thing. Uh, so you can either write multiple tests that do the same thing and just fail it at that point or you can use like try catch blocks and run a bunch of stuff and then then try and, and uh, see if it, it works later. Um, does that kind of answer what you're saying? You can come talk to me afterwards. Um, that's more on the Selenium side of stuff. I don't know what they taught in the Selenium classes yesterday. So, uh, <clears throat> but Android at iOS is you can tell it's a lot easier to work with, and Appium likes it more. Um, and then for the test, you go, it's basically the same. I threw in a tap for the, um, you can tell I changed the code on the tap. Like mine's will look a lot, a lot different than, uh, than theirs. So theirs is still Java. Oh, you, I forgot to mention. You can change it to Python or C Sharp, Ruby, whatever. Um, so when you do a precise tap here, that won't actually do anything probably. But here's what I was talking about. Um, they actually used a JavaScript executor. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there's already, Appium's made a class that you can just inject and takes care of all of that. Um, I know you did a swipe before. Can you do things like run a swipe and check the frames per second? <coughs> uh, checking frames per second is going to be hard, but you're basically telling it how fast to do it anyways. When your your duration of your finger swipe, so that should equal already. You should know what you're. I was just wanting. Yeah, if I wanted to test that the flow is still smooth without having. Yeah, you know what? Appium's not going to do that. For you. But there are, I mean, depending on your company, there are definitely some paid testing apps that are really nice that record videos and do, I mean, you can record videos with this. You can, Selenium can do that, but I don't recommend it. Um, so there are some, th some tools out there that, that are really cool for stuff like that, but they just cost money. This is free. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty pretty inexpensive. Um, so then, if you just run your test case, same as is uh, if that'll fail because it. Just added a shirt, open the cart, and deleted it, and it passed, so it's all good. Um, I was also going to show a browser test where you can just open up the browser and click around on there, but I don't really recommend doing browser based testing on the phone because you can just shrink your browser using Selenium on a, on a PC and it's faster. So um, unless it's actually in a device that you've plugged into, it, it's not really worth it. But if you're doing it on your device, then yeah, totally go for a browser-based test. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can come up and ask me, or if you want to get my email for uh, networking or questions later in the future, I'm happy to give that out too. So um, thanks for the help, by the way, the two guys that are better than me, probably. Um, so thanks, have a great day.